do you want to know how I take my painting that I didn't like, that I hated, that I was thinking about throwing away from this to this? Well, step back and watch the video and I go over this step by step. Yep, I talk about how I create all these little fun flowers using um, gouache and watercolor in this video and a little bit of um, a pen and ink as well. This is so much fun to do. Please don't throw away your paintings. Please use it as a tool to help you grow and create, you know, using patterns and colors and shapes. These things are good to learn. So don't throw away your good paper painting that you didn't like. I'm going to show you how I would just transform it into something that you might like and it helps you grow even more as an artist. So watch the tutorial and maybe you'll learn something from this. Okay guys. I also want to say check out my Patreon and add free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. It's just to please people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. You can check it out in a second in the top right hand corner. All right, let's get started. Okay, guys, so as you can see here, here's the painting that was like a failure to me that I was playing around with and it just didn't work out. But look, flowers look horrible. It's all washed out here. And this is where you like, some people would just throw it away and they would be like, I don't know what to do, it's just ugly, blah, and they get all discouraged, and they walk away. I'm telling you not to do that. Take this painting, which is, to me, extremely ugly, <laughs> and work on it. And this is where, um, if you have gouache, this will help come into play. And you're creating like a mixed media painting that actually ends up being something really like special, right? So I'm just going to use whatever brushes that are around me. I have a Princeton 8 round. I can still play with watercolor too, by the way. So here's the, like, the bright rose watercolor. And I can see what I can do with this. Maybe I can go back in here. I can. And fix some of the flowers. You know, go back in here. Play around with the flowers that were washed out. I'm not going to give up just yet. I see, we don't want to give up just yet. I'm making it really thicker going there. Let's see what happens. I'm going to play around with the edges on this one. But what is special when you grab, um, I have gouache here. So grab some white and I have magenta, right? And even more white. Because how you lighten gouache is with white, whereas with watercolor, you're adding more water. So now I can just go ahead and change this flower. Add some more white. And it's gonna change completely. It was all washed out, it was bleeding with green. It's terrible. Just by dabbing with some gouache over this, I'm changing the flower completely. And I don't hate it as much, right? I'm just adding in some white accents. I can go back in and add some more magenta. See? That's how you turn your drabby flowers into something cool. And I'm using some more white in here as an accent. Because I, I, you know, I basically failed at the watercolor part on this one. And I'm just going to fix it with some gouache. See? And the consistency is similar with watercolor. The more thick you have it, the more opaque it will be. See, I'm going back and adding some darker hues of this. So you would fill in that flower. You know, I have yellow here. Yellow gouache. That's pretty bright, but see where I'm going with this? You do the same thing on that flower. And then at this point, because it's gouache, Add some little bit of this magenta, a little bit more yellow orange. I even have orange over here. Um, you can do, because this is a dark green area, and you normally would be able to put watercolor here, but because it's squash, <laughs> you can paint like really, just paint right over that ugly green you saw, and start creating a whole new flower. Just this is simple petal flower. And then you could add highlights, you know, light yellow, orangey kind of highlights on the edges here. Same thing kind of what I did here with that one. 
the center it doesn't have to be yellow it can be black like a black eyed susan you know you can play around with it. now what colors you can paint over this because it was light green you can play around with your your watercolor right out of the tube so we have this verdier blue color up here and you can play around and see how it looks and if you don't have a lot of gouache colors i talk about this all the time i'll take my white gouache here I will mix it in with my Brodier Blue. Now it won't be the same as if it was gouache, but it's somewhat similar, right? See? Now you get this light blue. So if you only have white gouache, play around with mixing it with your watercolor. And then my watercolor going back up here. See? Just made these simple little blue flowers. Like I said, don't give up on your painting. And now the areas that are white, you can go back in with watercolor, right? Gonna add, and add some ultramarine blue. Look at that. Just really cool. You can still play around. So I'm gonna go back in here. I would go back in and add, like I just showed you with the magenta. You can still do it with the bright rose watercolor because it's darker than this. I even add magenta. Still play around with adding both gouache and watercolor to this. So I'm kind of fixing it, right? You can add a whole bunch more flowers. You could add um, just simple blobby kind of flowers. So let me move that. I'll show you like this. So more yellow, actually. I need more yellow. Doesn't have to be like this particular type of flower. So I'm gonna grab my yellow, a little bit of white, and just make a shape. It's kind of like a blobby shape. All right? Go ahead and add some orange. Now see it's still wet, so you can kind of blend it like an acrylic at this point. Orange center. Play around with kind of blobby shapes too. Get the orange here. You can do some more orange, the orange, just a blobby shaped flower. And add a yellow center. Doesn't have to be this perfect petal flower either. You gotta experiment, you know? Like I said, you can experiment even with color. We'll see what happens if you just blue over this. I'll just take peacock blue, for example. There's still this ugly green, but we'll see. It doesn't look that bad. You play around with it. And if it looks terrible, here's that peacock blue. Add a little white gouache to it and look what happens. It becomes kind of funky blue. So I know you guys have all these colors because I've been doing all my tutorials with these colors. So just by adding a simple white gouache to it. And adding more white gouache to that peacock blue gets even lighter. Right? The shapes of the flowers don't even have to be like that. You can just make them more like a bees. Just like that. And you can add the peacock blue right after the... See how I'm blending that? Right when it's wet. Grabbing the watercolor, even on my brush. With that white. Kind of a cool look. These are all little tools to play around with. Don't throw away your bad painting. <laughs> Play with it more. You know, I'm gonna grab some more like white yellow. Put some kind of blobby flower here. I like the blobby flowers. I'll show you what I mean by blobby flowers. So get the magenta. The pink again, I could put that over here. Kind of like the very graphic 60s market flowers as I would call them, All right? And you can add darker centers, lighter centers. Um, again, with the yellow, gonna have to mix in. I use a lot of white gouache, so it's good to have a lot of that in your repertoire. So you can play around with the yellow center on this one. If you wanna do some little yellow flowers up here. Don't throw away, and then not even just yellow flowers or red flowers or whatever flowers you can put up some 
cleaning up my brush again. Um, it doesn't have to be just flowers. How about some birds? How about some butterflies? You know, play around with that. Um, get the Brodier blue. Gonna mix in some bright rose. Make some purple. Do like a purple color here. Right? There's the the body of the butterfly and the wings. Could be whatever color you want. It could be orange, yellow, white, bright blue. I already have blue here. So I would maybe try to do yellowish kind of colors, yellow orange. Let's see how this will look. And it doesn't have to be this perfect wing. I'm gonna add a little more white in here. And then we'll play around with pattern inside the wing. Maybe I want a little darker orange. It kind of bled into my purple. That's okay. Just trying to give you guys some ideas of like don't throw your stuff away you can put a nice blue verde blue little butterfly down here like i said add a little bit of white to the gouache i had yellow on there so it kind of made it green try not to keep the you try not to mix that <laughs> it might not work out well So I'm just playing around with, you know, butterfly down here. This can be like a really just kind of funky wings. I have all kinds of blue wash. It's a phthalo blue. I love wash. I've used it for a long time. See that intense blue. Simple wings. All right, we'll go back in and put the center. Um, also play around with just simple once you get some all these flowers done like line type shapes linear shapes so you could do um, flowers that just look like this with the lines kind of wiggling the pattern the center right do some of the little black dots in here I really need, just need you guys to stop thinking that the painting is ugly I must destroy it. See, it's already coming together slowly. Then you can add some greens. So I've got my yellows and my blues. This is watercolor, actually a little mixed in gouache. So I use my peacock blue and my yellow. Make my green. I start adding in some greens, right? Just simple leaves, nothing special. Filling in some of these spaces, it's bright green. Can even make it even darker by adding in the Prussian blue. See? And I would kind of define the flower by adding in some dark green in here. It's nice. Now it's coming together, right? It's starting to look like a non ugly duckling and turn it into something pretty. That's what I want you to do. I don't want you to throw away your stuff. It helps you learn to do other things. See, I'm just adding in the stems here. And I could add leaves off that. You play around with what you got. It's starting to come together. Right? So I'm gonna go in and do a video of me filming me filming filming me filling <laughs> say that ten times fast. Filming myself filling in these flowers and whatnot. You see, you, here's that like you know, simple, it's still drying, but you take the yellow one, the pink one could be heavy, darker pink center or a light yellow center. It's a little wet. But I don't want you guys to be freaked out that or upset that you didn't do well and you wasted all that money on a nice piece of paper. If you have some gouache, save your painting and just play it with shapes, floral shapes. Practice that. Okay, so say you're not practicing today, you're not practicing bleed on bleed and wet on wet and all that. I'm not saying nonsense, but it's all important. 
but really sometimes it's good to practice is um, shapes of flowers, highlights, lowlights with a concentrated kind of um, petal. So like it's not bleeding. You're going to have to figure out the tonality of each petal where the white comes into play, where it's lighter. These are all help you even in your watercolor. And then you don't get so frustrated, right? And mixed media is like really fun to play with. See, I'm mixing, I'm mixing watercolor and gouache. Um, you can go in and take some. I don't want to do. I'll talk about this when it's dry. Like taking, like a sharpie pen and making some nice linear marks with that. You can do it with your paintbrushes. This, this. Don't get discouraged. The whole point is to have fun joy and putting some yellow in here right I mean some people would just throw this away and I'm just gonna keep playing with this until I feel like it's the most beautiful painting I've ever done <laughs> maybe not so but, but you guys get what I'm saying you want to play 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 so I'm adding in you know all kinds of like goofy yellow orange flowers like I said the simple shapes like from like the 60s, you know, think of like that, the old 60s flowers, some V's and some circles. Play around with that. Really just simple shapes. And then down here, you can fill it all in. You can put the stems in, you can put big leaves in. Here you can use the watercolor because it's lighter. You can add some green stems you can play around with stems coming this way see I'm going back to making now that there's white here now you can add the watercolor out here right you have your watercolors even mixed up I'm gonna grab my purple and just paint your little purple flowers or whatever kind of whatever you want to put in here so it's a mixture of like this nice soft watercolor and then some really opaque and you know, matte kind of hard line flowers. It becomes more interesting, less snoozy, you know, not as boring. We want our stuff to look kind of cool, don't we? So you're playing around with watercolor here. See the way the white is? Just play. I'm just playing with the watercolor. Adding in some pretty delicate leaves. The painting has already morphed, right? All out here is still white. And I can still go in and add darker green and lighter green I'm using, mixing up some greens here it's gonna change and I'm gonna add something else in the end so instead of me talking as I'm painting here um, I'm gonna show you as I'm painting it I'm gonna make it I might speed it up a little bit and then we'll come back in at the end and show you some more kind of cool things to do now, like I said, this portion I have sped up a bit because it's, you know, you're not going to sit there and want to watch me paint every single flower and whatnot. I'm just showing you quickly how I'm just moving around this painting and putting in and adding in pinks and purples and yellows. And then, you know, there's blobby shapes and then there's like tulip shapes and then there's, um, you know, daisy type of shapes, different colors. I put a little... Um, butterfly down below like you saw before I add the patterns to the butterflies listen you can guys can add some birds bugs you know go crazy this is where you get really creative if you're stuck take that painting that you messed up that you hate and you throw it away and sometimes usually you can use it for um, playing around with colors or values or even um, color palettes that you want to use for the next painting but I say play around with using it gouache if you've never used it before number one number two different types of flower shapes you want to play around with all that nonsense just put it all on the page throw it all down <laughs> it's the most fun thing to do it's just like a big doodle in a way but you know creative as well so please just go ahead and play so I'm gonna you know speed this up like I talked about and then I'm gonna come back in and talk about some more stuff so keep watching
So I filled in some of this. I didn't fill in all of it. I also want to talk about taking colors and using them as a darker value as opposed to saying the dark pink here. I'll take my darker blue, this uh, phthalo blue, and see I just dotted it around the yellow. I'll take the little lines here. So you can highlight it with a darker color in a deep value. So you say take, take the same value of you would use like for a dark red or something like that. And you would do blue or another color. But it just changes the flower again, makes it a little more interesting. Just wanted to show you this. I change this down here. I'll keep changing it over and over again until I feel like, you know, and then you just put little patterns. I'm doing the little dots around the um, daisies here on the left side, as you can see. So I highlighted that. I'll put some dots here and I'll add the yellow in the center and add the blue out here. You can just take this blue, make little pretty daisies out here. You know, just keep filling the whole thing. I added some stems up here. I'll add some more greenery and some stems around where the, you know, it's now that I've hit in the white part, I can go and play with some greens. You know, that the white part still, this part's fine. We can still kind of play around with adding greens up over in here with watercolor. So don't give up on a painting. See, I can just go fill in all these little spaces, these nooks and crannies, some nice bright greens, add some leaves, change it up again, add the stems. This is, like I said, where you play with what you got. <laughs> and like I said, if you didn't have, um, didn't have all that kind of gouache colors and whatnot. You can just use the white, and I showed you how to do that to fill it in. See, I'm adding in some more leaves up in here. Gonna, I'm just going to keep filling this sucker in because it's calling me to fill it in, right? And so I'm basically erasing the whole picture that you saw that I didn't like, and I'm just it's not going to be the same picture anymore. It's going to be a whole another elevated picture. And the simple little blobby flowers, come on, you guys can totally do that. So I'm just going to show you down here real quick. So I have the simple yellow flower. You can take your Sharpie pen and make cool little daisies. Let me zoom in a little bit. Just by putting a blob there. See, some of it's not dry yet, but you see what I'm saying? How interesting is that? And kind of cool, right? You can use a Sharpie pen to add the same kind of element designs to some of the other flowers that are there. And then it becomes even more interesting. Don't just get stuck on watercolor so much. Um, these guys are dry. You can add kind of a fun, funky little, you know, center in here. See? Just do a bunch of these little lines and some dots on the ends. It gets more interesting. You want to go back over where the dots are and make them colors. So it's kind of like a big old doodle, actually, if you think about it. Right? Put another one of those little funky teases in here. Just, I want you to put, see, I put another yellow up here so I can highlight the circle and then draw the daisy. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this and we can come back at the end and talk about it again. So as you can see, I got a little crazy, a little wild, added a bunch of different colors. You do the little dots, little lines, all that, oh, it's getting blurry. All that fun stuff. Just fill it all in, guys. Just go crazy. You know, have fun. Play around with color. This might not be your cup of tea. Oops, I got a little wet. Um, but it's just another way to just to not throw away what you're doing and clap. It's to practice, and you can create something really kind of cool. You know, you might really like it. I might not. I might want to finish the bottom. I don't know. I might not want to finish the bottom. I was playing around with, you know, just keeping it simple 
but it's kind of funky little design, right? And it didn't take much to do this. You just keep playing around with adding color, taking out color. I mean, I just, I like to play. And I think this is what you guys need to do when you don't, when you have a painting that you feel like, I hate it and I want to throw it away. Well, don't throw it away. Take that painting and play with pattern, shape, color, all that good stuff, you know, put all the mediums in one shot. <laughs> so I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you're frustrated and you were like, had a painting you hated, which I did, and I'm going in, I'm just still going to keep playing, adding in some more color. I don't know. I don't even know if I like this, but I did want to try something different. And the more I play, the more, the better I get. And same thing with you guys. Someone's like, oh, when I my first try, it didn't come out great. Well, that's because it's your first try. It doesn't always come out that way in the first try. All right, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope you're having a great day and staying cool. And uh, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button. Okay, guys. Take care, and I'll speak to you soon.